Born in East Hartford, Connecticut, Bob Burbridge started studying martial arts at 19 years old at the Sherman Oaks, California studio owned by Chuck Norris and Bob Wall. He received his black belt from Chuck Norris, who named Burbage on the top 10 students he's ever trained. Bob won the world famous internationals three times, the National Western US Championships and the Four Seasons Championships as well. He also trained many celebrities, Steve McQueen, Olivia Newton-John, and Priscilla Presley to name a few. In addition to fighting in tournaments and instructing others, Burbage introduced video playback as a training aid to learning martial arts. Combat is the only thing you can get ready for in a karate tournament. Donnell Garcia was born in New York and grew up in California. He was a gymnast in high school, worked at a steel plant, then aircraft company, before being drafted to the Army in 1966. In 1968, he enrolled at Chuck Norris's karate studio in El Segundo, California. By 1972, he would earn his black belt at the National Grand Championships. Later, he won the Grand Championship title from Joe Lewis at the Long Beach Internationals. Darnell Garcia acted in movies, including the golf scene with John Saxon in Enter the Dragon, along with his Tang Soo Do instructor. When they get the firing range from you, they instantly key. You know, it's like they, they flex in, they go. That's why it's hard for us to get our kicks in, because see, they won't get close to us and stand still. You know, because then you can get that fake and slow kick in. When they get that close, they're firing. In the military, he worked as a policeman later becoming a DEA agent working with the LAPD. They know who's hit, they know who's hitting who. Like I know when he had hit me two times, they didn't call it. And like he knows two times I got him, they didn't call it. So it's like we know and even though they're not calling, we might as well smile and just keep on plugging, try to get something that hopefully they'll see. But I guess it is that you, you really get the feeling that that's an accomplishment because I got him that time. You know, that that's the one time I really hit him. And that's I don't know, that is a kind of an accomplishment. And I, to me I'm happy about it because he knows he'll even smile, you know, all right, that was in there. Right. Especially if you start the whole match off, and everybody's happy to begin with, you know. You know, more or less, no, no animosity. That's what right. It looked like you're having a good time. Yeah, you know, that's all it is, it's fun. We're not making any money. <laughs> well, I started in high school first at Cudge Kimball School in, in uh, Iowa. Then I moved to uh, California. I went to college there, and I started up with uh, Chuck Norris. And I'm working out every day, two, three hours a day, led into four or five hours a day, running in discipline. In the old days, it was, we call that hardcore. You fought with guys that wanted, wanted to fight, wanted to be there. Yeah, I mean, they had a core of guys that were coming up all together. We had guys that were tremendous fighters. We loved to fight each other in the tournament. Because it was still only two minutes. The only thing we hated was fighting these guys in the studio because nobody would call time. I wanted to be as good as they were or better. And I was in an era where they would come down and work out. I got the chance to fight Roy Kerbin, Bill Waller, uh, Jeff Smith, Demetrius Havanas, John Worley. I was one of those guys that worked out all the time and perfected my, my techniques and learned from them. When I fought uh, Benny Quittis, it was winning against him, and he gave me the opportunity to, to, to keep going. Each individual has their own qualities. You don't look for a specific standard because then you you have a guideline towards something. And standards always are, are broken in some form or another. Born in Alabama, Cecil Peoples had an interest in baseball and moved to California in 1966 to practice with the Pirates. 
In the offseason, he joined the Navy and ended up serving two tours in Vietnam. With the gangs and fighting at the time in California, Cecil took an interest in the martial arts after seeing a demo on TV by Bill Ryusaki. He earned his second degree black belt sooner than his classmates, and he also trained and learned a lot from Steve Muhammad. Cecil was an undeniable force in the point tournaments. He also competed in kickboxing, full contact, and in the Muay Thai fighting circuits. He has a well-established school in Van Nuys, California. Cecil returned to the world of MMA as the controversial referee in the early years of the UFC. Criticized for his lack of officiating in the matches, Cecil focused more on what true physical combat was, allowing the fighters to take and give as much as they could in the octagon. In the offseason, I got involved with karate, and the first lesson I took, I knew what I wanted to do the rest of my life. When I went to my instructor, Bill Ryosaki, I was only, I was six feet tall, 145 pounds, and he was 6'1 or 6'2, and he wasn't much bigger than me. So I figured, man, oh man, if this guy can toss people around like that, this is what I want. I have another role model that I trained with. Uh, his name at the time was Steve Sanders. He was the founder of the Black Karate Federation. I trained with him a lot. His name is Steve Muhammad now. I've trained with him uh, a whole lot, and I learned a lot from him. Be drawn to the instructor, be drawn to his ability to teach, to handle your child, to handle you the way he handled other students. Al DeCascos was born in 1942 in Honolulu, Hawaii. From 11 to 18 years old, DeCascos practiced several martial arts, karate, jiu-jitsu, kenpo, and even Chinese boxing. He moved to California in 1965 and opened his own school. Over the next few years, he would teach train and study with other Chinese martial artists in the San Francisco area. By 1969, he developed his own style, Wan Hop Kun Do, the way of the combined fist. It combines Filipino and Chinese martial arts into the Kaiju Kendo system. Fakes is uh, deception, and it falls into the category of the principle of unpredictability. And being, being, un being unpredictable um, in attacking the opponent causes confusion, and when it causes confusion, that means he is not really uh, thinking about his defense anymore. He's just trying to figure out exactly what you're going to be doing or even thinking about his offense. But once we begin to start working the, the deception part of it, everything that comes in after is going to have to be going on initial speed or, or intentionally faking slow, fake high, hit low, or fake low and hit high. The Cascos was the first to compete in the American martial arts tournament with Kung Fu as most fought under karate at the time. He would later establish his schools in Berlin, Germany. The fruition of his career is shown through his son, Mark DeCascos. Mark is an eighth degree black belt, undefeated in forms and fighting in European tournaments. He is also an accomplished movie actor as well. Mark worked with Shaw veteran Philip Kwok in Brotherhood of the Wolf, and recently with Keanu Reeves, Iku Weiss, and Yaya Nguyen in John Wick 3. As a competitor, Ralph Alegria was big, aggressive, and moved extremely fast for his size. He was the only black belt practitioner to accept the Gracie Challenge, publicly in a no-holds contest. Ralph was the second oldest of seven brothers, six who studied martial arts. From an early age, they were taught that a fighter's strength comes from self-respect. Ralph and his brothers owned the Allegria Brothers Karate Studios in California. They incorporated weightlifting, running into hours of daily training. Ralph said, when I fight, I feel obligated to show the fans what karate really is. So I go all out every time. Yeah, lost a lot of weight. Two five pounds, about one seventy five. Are you? Yeah. I feel faster, but not hitting as hard, you know. Yeah. Good man. 
Great round kick. Just had to get inside his round kick. Knocked off his back. I had him. So Did you get hurt? His... No. Did you hurt him? I'm tough. I'm tough. Born in Detroit in 1951, Howard Jackson began studying Kung Fu in 1967. He earned his black belt in Tang Soo Do in 1970 from Huang Ki and Harold Williams. He also trained and tested under Chuck Norris. As with most of his contemporaries, he began his point fighting career while serving in the Marine Corps. 1973 was his biggest year, winning in several major tournaments. He was nicknamed the California Flash for his speed, timing, and all his matches. Howard Jackson participated in one of the world's first full contact championships. He lost against Dominican Taekwondo fighter Ramon Smith in the fight labeled the upset of the decade. Jackson learned from this fight, improving and redeeming himself in the full contact kickboxing fights versus Japanese artists in 1980 and 1981. Howard Jackson, the new welterweight world champion. What an incredible fight. Howard, I can't understand how you're standing up. The punishment to your left leg must be incredible. Well, that was the leg I had my surgery on. And I figure if I could take it from these guys, the way they shoot their kicks, I could take it from anybody. It just shows that my leg is ready and prepared to move on to the next fight. There's absolutely no question about that. On the other hand, you gave him some fantastic punishment. Were you surprised that he took it? I sure was. I sure was. He, he really had great stamina. Uh, I can't say nothing bad about the guy. He kept coming. I kept hitting him, and he kept coming. At one point, he had you here on the ropes, and then it seemed like he let you go. You're beautiful, Howard. You're well, beautiful. You got to make your Don't fight to beat him. I was trying to set him up when he, and let him go and let him throw what he had. Then after he tired himself out, then I'd come right back with something else. World welterweight champion, Howard Jackson, congratulations. Feels good. I've been trying to get this for a long time. Born in Hawaii in 1943, Mike Stone learned Aikido in high school. After graduating, he enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1962, where he began studying Shorin Ryu Karate. Known for his aggressiveness in martial arts tournaments, he was nicknamed The Animal, with 91 consecutive wins. At the popular 1964 International Karate Championships, he won the Sparring Grand Championship. Stone also won the U.S. National and World Professional Karate Championships in 1968. He is also known for training Elvis and Priscilla Presley. Well, it actually started uh, when I was in, in Hawaii, you know, growing up in Hawaii. Karate and Judo and Aikido was very popular in Hawaii. Primarily from watching the Japanese films, I really got interested in the, in the arts. The answer is there is no secret. There are really no secrets to anything that anyone accomplishes. What people call secrets are really ideas that they don't choose to apply in their own life. So to them, it is a secret. Why? Because they're not using it. If you can get an earlier start, that means the younger you are, when you are focused and you have an idea of who you are and what you want to do, the earlier you come to this point, the easier it is for you. Born in 1953 in Los Angeles, California, Stephen began studying Shorin Ryu Karate at 13 years old. Nicknamed the California Kid, he was known worldwide for competing and winning in many tournaments. In 1971, at 18 years old, he opened the Steve Fisher Karate Studio in California. As a nationally known kata competitor, Fisher featured an exclusive kata, the Moon Kata, for Karate Illustrated in the 1970s. You know, Steve was what we call a complete martial artist. You know, he fought, and then he kickboxing, karate, and then he would do weapons. His students recalled his philosophy and training. To become a champion, one must train, think, and act like a true champion. You know, 
if you get angry, it doesn't serve any purposes and uh, it makes you just look bad. So you're just trying to go in there and do the best job you can and come out with it. You know, it doesn't matter who wins or loses, it's just... I don't know what's worse, fighting or doing this. Born in 1939, Steve Muhammad learned Tai Chi in his youth. He attended Kansas State University where he learned Goju Ru Karate. Steve Muhammad competed in the tournament circuit before civil rights was exercised for all Americans in the 1960s. Despite this limitation, he would be a dominating force in the world of karate tournaments. He won many state and national titles, earning one of his 10 black belts from Dan Inosanto. After his tour as an elite paratrooper in Vietnam, he worked with the LA County Sheriff for 20 years. Steve defeated Chuck Norris in his early career and holds wins over Ed Parker. In addition to co-founding the Black Karate Federation, Steve also developed the Five Speed Theory and the 12 Basic Modes of Kempo. The idea of fighting is one thing to be able to see and move. Benny the Jet Yerkides is the most prolific martial artist of his generation. Born in Los Angeles County, California, he came from a family of accomplished fighters. He began competing at the age of five in peewee boxing and wrestling. Benny also trained under Bill Ryusaki, receiving his first black belt at only 14 years old. He entered point fighting from 1964 to 1973. It's been a while since I lost. I know, so it feels I that way. It just that that may make me feel, you know, make me feel like I want to work next time even harder into it. Uh, you know, it doesn't to me. Like I said, losing is winning. You know, I just learned that song. So I next time I take it. Next time I won't give him a chance. Yeah. His fight in 1974 with fellow fighter John Natividad is noted as one of the greatest non-contact bouts in history. The following year, Benny would move away from non-contact to full contact fighting. Jerkides mixed his training from karate, boxing, and kickboxing, taking on fighters from all over the world. He wanted me to put on traditional Thai shorts, and I, and I wouldn't do it. And I said, then, finally, I said, I'm going home. If I can't wear my long pants, I'm going home. So they, so they just said, doesn't matter. Suzuki's gonna knock me out anyway, so it didn't matter to them. They said, fine. 
So I know they told Suzuki to try to finish me off fast. I was having fun. So I took up my axe in the fifth round. I started chopping. Good, good. High round kick followed by. In 1977. Urquidez beat Japanese champion Katsuyuki Suzuki in front of 22,000 people. Right to the head. He's down again, second time. Now in the United States, definitely we'd stop the fight here. His corner saying, "Get back in there," and I think he's saying, "You get back in." He looks like he's had it. Should stop it. The Japanese fans could hardly believe their eyes. At the finish, Urquidez was immediately challenged by former champion Kunimatsu Okawa. The winner, indeed. No sooner did I finish him knock him out, Okawa jumped in the ring. I don't know what he was saying, but he was pointing this and that. And so the interpreter asked me, well, do you know who Okawa is? And I said, was I supposed to? I have no idea who he is or what he is. I, all I know is he's, he challenged me. I accept. So when I got in there, he looked much bigger than me. Okawa, his eyes, his calves. I said, are you sure this guy met is at 140? Yeah. Like many of the other fighters in Japan, they're no, tremendous oh, right hand. That doesn't happen often. Look at Benny, he's right back up. Look, I jumped up, I said, now we're going to fight. Yeah. And, and this guy yeah. threw me across the ring. Every blow he hits, I can feel that he is very strong. So my brother said, so what are you going to do? Benny your two long game? My brother said, take off the axe, start chopping. His chin is weak. Kiddies has uh, given a notice to the world that he'll fight anywhere in the world. That's the only way you're ever going to establish real world champions in professional karate. He's the first one, he'll go anywhere. Nice combinations there. Oh, now Benny's he's, getting serious. He's, he's, he's felt it now. He's Listen to that crowd going crazy. Look at Benny throw those combinations. Lefts, rights, all to the head. He's got a taste of it now. He's, got, he's on it. I can't count the punches he the Look at those combinations. Sugar Ray Leonard's trying to come back. Sugar Ray Leonard with feet. Look at him go. Beautiful. Okay, okay, wants to hang on. Or he just says no, no. no. He says hit. it's time, baby. It's time. Oh. Thrust kick. Oh, look oh, at that he, right. He, 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 eyes rolled back in his head. I, I personally feel Benny Urquidez is the greatest full contact kickboxing champion of all times. But Benny fought every kickboxer. He, I mean, every style. You, you tell him where you wanted him to be, he was there and he was prepared. Rounding off his career with a near-perfect record, Benny also expanded his martial arts to the world of film. He was featured in two Jackie Chan movies, Meals on Wheels and Dragons Forever. He did not stop. He kept on saying, I want a rematch. And I said, I'll give you a rematch. We went on the Black Belt magazine cover, both of us, because we was, we were going to rematch. positive whether I won or lost. If I lost any, any of the fights, it just uh, made me work harder and it made me understand how the opponent actually fought. It gave me an idea on how to come and, and use my principles the next time around. As far as winning, yeah, I had a lot of winnings, but winnings was just a, just a stepping stone for my own personal growth. I never look at a tournament competition for the trophies. It was more for enlightening my own fighting skills. My ribs been broken, my jaw been broken, uh, my hands been broken. It was no semi-contact. It was the golden era of martial arts. So how do you guys feel about the fight for? Uh, what fight? fight? <laughs> <laughs> 